McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As Chairman of the Appointments Committee, I'm very pleased to put forward two names for membership on our Family Fun Day Committee, which will bring that committee up to full strength. The two are Pirette Lawler, who is currently a member of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. She's also expressed an interest and willingness to serve on the Family Fun Day Committee. I thought that was a very appropriate connection to have somebody on Fort Williams Advisory Commission on that committee. Um, the second is Bob Danielson, who is relatively new in this area, but um, has very good background, is, I believe, a member of the Rotary Club and knew about Family Fun Day through some of his contacts in the Rotary Club and was very willing to take on um, this committee position as well. Both of these appointments are to 1198. We were minus two three-year appointments. Um, I did not discuss that length of term with either of these people, but <laughs> we will have further discussions along those lines. I would make a recommendation that the council accept um, the two names put forward this evening for the second. And Mulder and second. Anybody got a comment? I have a comment. Oh, all right. Um, yes. I just Councilman. wanted to add that Bob Danielson is married to a classmate of mine from Cape Elizabeth High School, a Cape Elizabeth native, Alicia Madalini, so he's not really new. He's just, just <laughs> he married a local girl yes. who's one of my neighbors. Yes. <laughs> so he's okay. <laughs> he used to be here years ago, huh? But, yeah, <laughs> in, in spirit anyway. In spirit. Okay. <laughs> Ready for the vote. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote. It's three years. <laughs> Item 118, to consider approving the following uses at Fort Williams Park during 1995 and taking necessary action. Now, if the remaining members of the council agree, I'll read off the ones that want to use the fort, and we'll vote on it all at once. Is that agreeable? Yes. Fine. Cable is High School graduation, June 9, 1995. MS Bicycle Society Tour, June 24, 1995. Family Fun Day, June 17, 1995, Rain Date, June 18, 1995, Portland and Symphony Orchestra, June 30, 1995, and Angel One Art Show, September 3, 1995, Rain Date, September 4, 1995. Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you. getting good, <laughs> Well done, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Uh, due to a perceived conflict of interest, um, as I am president of the Portland Symphony Orchestra Board of Trustees, I would ask that I be um, excused from this vote. The rest of the board agree? Sure. Yes. I don't see why you need to, but that's all right. We don't need them. I don't think you're going to load the vote. There's no financial. Should and there's no money involved. Yeah. Okay, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, as the parent of a graduating senior from Cape Elizabeth High School. <laughs> oh, there's no comment. That's immaterial. That and I know, no, I'm going to make the motion. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 <laughs> he let me make it two years ago. You're going to have a cheap cop out here. I thought you were yeah. going to make a speech about it. No, I was going to. <laughs> I get enough trouble. I was going to support the proposal and move the dates as you read them, sir. Second. And moved and seconded. Any other comment? I, 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 I want to raise one question. It is not on here uh, in, in this motion, but uh, going through uh, the minutes of a meeting of the Fort Williams Advisory uh, Commission of January 19th, they had received and approved a, uh, an event by the uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association which uh, was going to be held on Sunday, May 21st, and which was going to be motorcycles, which I could see uh, parading up by Meeting House Hill uh, Congregational Church, St. Albans and goodness only knows who else, right during services on Sunday morning. Has that died? I, I don't believe it has died, but it hasn't come to the council yet. Uh, it, it would need to come to the council to be approved before you they were allowed to You made that support. statement. And mm. I just think that uh, you maybe ought to get back to them that that might be a frustrating event to even bring it to us. Well, it, I, I will, you know, I, I probably should have had it on the agenda when I was put together this list. I, I put that one aside and, uh, you know, what we should do is probably, you, you will be meeting, I think, on the 27th for a workshop and 
Uh, it's going to be a busy night, but I mean, no. you've got to make it an official. Well, the point is, if the council is apt to say no, they ought to hear about it sooner rather than later, so that they I, can stop. I believe that because this is, uh, was a meeting held over a month ago that uh, yeah. I picked this up, and they shouldn't be hanging in suspense. But to answer your questions, that's not among these approvals. The, and I would like to point out the MS Society bicycle tour uh, does not include sh Shore Road from Fort Williams out. Well, that someone yeah, watching right. may have it's wondered that. It goes back bicycles, the other way. They don't make noise. Okay. Has the have you received an application for the motorcycle? The Fort Committee did, but I don't seem to have any paperwork on it, so I'll, I'll have Will to Will you track follow that up? We don't want to get them riding. It's in minutes, and that's where I think. Yeah, I, and, uh, I don't have any paperwork, so. We shouldn't get them riding up Cottage Road and then have to vote on it. That's all I'm <laughs> concerned about. I understand. I'm going to send them down Wells Road. <laughs> all those in favor of the motion, please indicate it by raising your right hand. Those opposed to vote, seven to nothing. Six. 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 We bumped her. Oh, I included her. I don't think she had a conflict. <laughs> I didn't approve her. <laughs> so you can write down what you want. Okay. <laughs> that Robert's rules. <laughs> Item 119, to consider a proposed fee for burials at Riverside Cemetery and take any necessary actions. Now, we don't have nobody speaking on that other than you, Deborah, sir. Deborah. Deborah's going to do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. In October, we awarded the uh, Cemetery Burial Services bid to G.W. Murray and Son for the 1995-1996 burial seasons. In your packet, um, I've included the current rate plus the proposed rates for 1995 and 1996. I would ask that you approve the rates. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Yep, let's go. Anybody got a comment? Yes, Council McLaughlin. Um, question to either the manager or the town clerk. Do we know how many bidders we had on this? I know it was last fall. So we had more than one bid. She, she's looking at me. I don't request the number of bidders we had, but what we've traditionally done with this bid is to send out a request for proposals to anyone we know of who was in Cape Elizabeth who had a backhoe. Uh, that's, that's about five different parties, uh, and they were all given an opportunity to bid. and. I, quite frankly, I don't remember. Usually, two firms bid on this, and it's highly competitive. Uh, I, but I don't have the notes with me. I don't recall if uh, Leland P. Murray put in a bid as well. But uh, usually, Gerald W. Murray and Son bids. Leland P. Murray. We always send an RFP to Wally Preston. Uh, I think one or two others. But it's based on we, we try to keep the work in town because you got, you got to be readily accessible, and we want a community spirit in this thing to really work with folks. And, uh, is this restricted just to Cape Elizabeth contractors or is it published? I would consider the potential of Scarborough or uh, South Portland as being equally accessible. Yeah, we, we have never, we have never bid it outside of town. Okay. We take Anybody it else? our own, huh? That's all right. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Talk to me later. I have a backhoe. You didn't send me one. You have a backhoe? Yes. Well, put him on the list. He would have been a conflict there, Bill. Sorry. So I'd have a you could conflict have said. of interest. What I would. Anybody get a comment one way or the other? Did I get a motion? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the second. Mm -hmm. yes. Made in second. I have a comment. Also, there's a rate increase. Here. And everybody understands the rate increase. Yes. No, we don't pay it. They don't. Do you, you recommend the rate increase? <coughs> Ever? Yes, sir. Do you have a choice? So no choice. You're taking the low bid. You're taking the low bid unless you go outside the town. Mm -hmm. you, you might be. Okay, I won't get into it. Go, well, I, go on. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that rate increase uh, just supports the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, the saying that you can't escape death and taxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, let me just say, it's steep. <laughs> everything seems to go up other than... 
Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Councilor Dalbach. This That's one of the reasons I asked the question about going outside. The increases that have taken place are steep. These are not what I would call inflationary increases. Uh, but we've gone up, uh, you know, you're going up uh, from $200 to $250 in two years, and that certainly is not a 3% uh, inflation increase. So uh, I'm not too sure that somebody shouldn't consider going wider for bids in the future. I think uh, two points. One is this replaces a three-year bid. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not not as if you can look at it on a year-to-year -year -year basis, although well, certainly during the terms here it, it does go up by the amounts yeah. indicated. Uh, second, I, we've clearly heard the message of uh, that, this, that this should be broadened uh, to other bidders as well. It's a, the nature of it is, is you, 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 you run into all sorts of problems, and yeah. it's nice to have someone working on it who you can get to be responsive to all of the difficulties and issues come up and sometimes you get an out of town contractor and you know you tell them that you know sorry this hole needs to be dug you know in rather soon fashion because of xyz reason uh, you know even though there's the specifications in the bid once in a while we ask for a, a break in the specifications to deal with this particular unique situation and you know it's uh, it's not an easy job it's you you, you can't plan your life uh, when you're when you're in this business, did I explain Anybody that? Okay, Deb? Yes. Very good. No, I just wanted to point it out. I mean, I know the gentleman that does it, and I think they do a tremendous job, and they have a lot of uh, pride in the cemetery. And uh, I just wanted to point out out that did you all realize of the increases to last which. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed, to vote. Seven to nothing. Item 120, to consider a request from the City of Poland to participate in actions to continue to apply pressure to Time Warner Cable, cable services, and take any necessary action. You would like to make a comment? I'll make a brief introduction. You, got a, you have a newspaper article that indicates that Portland is embarking on a process that does a couple of things. One is to influence, uh, one is to file a complaint with the FCC to uh, talk about de-scrambling and some of those issues. And the second is to uh, help draft legislation, uh, particularly for Olympia Snow, who uh, is on the, the key committee. Uh, that would keep a level playing field once these types of services expands to the regional bells as well as uh, the uh, the existing uh, cable companies. Uh, Bill and Alan, or of Chapel and I, did spend some time talking with some folks in Washington on this, and I think uh, Council Linnell is uh, prepared to explain more on this issue. Council Linnell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the manager just uh, alluded to, we, we met uh, with the chairman of the FCC, Mr. Reed Hunt, and uh, the upshot of that conversation was that he really couldn't do anything for us until, unless we filed a complaint. Um, and so, uh, again, we've attended meetings uh, or meeting with uh, the folks in Portland, and, and they are um, initiating a, a complaint with the FCC. And, and uh, of course, uh, everything costs something, and they are—they've engaged the uh, services of a uh, crackerjack law firm in Washington that uh, has a lot of experience in dealing with these issues, and they're looking for uh, a, uh, some help from us. We would certainly benefit from uh, anything that uh, anything that comes out of this uh, case. And uh, we're what the Greater Portland community I think includes 58,000 uh, cable subscribers, and so uh, the uh, city of Portland has proposed um, uh, equitably uh, determining some, uh, a figure to spread that cost out amongst uh, the various communities that sign on. And so I, I guess I would just ask the manager if he has a figure in mind. 2,000. Okay. 
So, uh, therefore, uh, I would propose that we uh, jump on the bandwagon, as it were, and uh, uh, appropriate $2,000 uh, to uh, help uh, uh, to join in this action. Do I hear a second? Do you want to recommend where you get the two? I'll ask them. I'd like to ask the manager for any suggestions. Yes, I, I would suggest to come out of undesignated surplus, but let, let me tell you where the funds are really coming from, and that's that when we put the budget together every year, we get monies from Time Warner that are paid by the, the people that uh, get cable service in town. They pay 3 percent of all the charges. Uh, that money is coming in above the level that, that had been budgeted, you know, in sufficient, more than sufficient numbers to pay this. Uh, you know, t to me, if, if I may go on a little bit beyond the question, as I sometimes do, uh, the, uh, I think that the real key in this is not only the pending issue with the scrambling and some of those issues, but even more so the real, very real possibility that we may lose that revenue source in future years. We may lose this cable access channel. Uh, because the way things are being fast-tracked in Washington, they're having a markup on this in a couple of weeks, uh, is, is that uh, if the regional bells are allowed to get into the business, there is currently no provision putting a level playing field in treating the regional bells the same way as the cable companies, i.e., there would be no access channel, there would be no franchise fee. So, you know, I think what we're really talking here is an investment to really work with someone that can write legislation, uh, you know, f from Washington who knows how to do those things to uh, help particularly Senator Snow uh, in our meeting with her, was that yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. You know, her, her specific comment in, in all this discussion was, can you get me some draft legislation? And, you know, we in Portland, Maine, Cape Elizabeth, Maine, don't know how to write those type things. And unfortunately, the reality is you've got to deal with the, the Washington firms who do that. But if we can get that done and then get it channeled back to, to Senator Snow, hopefully we would have language that would preserve those rights. And uh, when, when cable, you know, can, begins to have some competition, uh, everyone is treated equally and the, the, ultimately the customers are still being given the benefit of uh, access channels such as such as our own. So there's, there's there's a lot riding on this beyond, you know, just this. Anybody else, Councilor Dalbert? I assume uh, those issues that uh, concern you there are also issues that are concerning Portland. Yes, I had a discussion with Elizabeth Boynton today, who's the Assistant Corporation Counselor Attorney for the City of Portland, and uh, those are very much issues. Uh, also. Uh, you know, Senator Snow did particularly indicate that she wasn't too strong on the issue of the level playing field. She indicated a little bit of a hesitation that she had been mainly dealing up to now with the scrambling issue. And uh, I had some discussion with even Jeff Darrell today, who obviously the cable company wants a level playing field, and he's going to be sending me some information as well on what are all the franchise fees and, you know, that's the... That's the strange thing in all this, that, you know, sometimes you're, you're, you're uh, yeah, politics makes strange bedfellows. But uh, he's a very sharp man. Councilor Nell. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, I'd just like to add that uh, it was apparent in our conversation with uh, Mr. Hunt from the FCC that he had heard from Senator Olympia Snow. And, uh, and so... If she's listening tonight, I'd just like to thank her for her efforts oh. down in Washington. Yeah, sure. I'm sure she's listening. Yeah. Sure. Councilor Cogeshall. Mr. McGovern, are any other towns joining with Portland? Yeah, Portland. Oh. There's a memo. Yeah, I have it. You have it? You have it, Jean. Uh, Portland has put in $10,000, and Cumberland has put in 2000 and South Portland and Yarmouth are also going to be considering um, putting in some additional funding. Okay. Yeah. Pretty the only one, I, Scarborough didn't seem too inclined to do it at one meeting they had for, they essentially Earth. took the position that cable was between the cable company and the customers and the municipality shouldn't get involved at all. But they are. I mean, look at all the debate they had over there about their contract. But. Okay, Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm curious where the figure of 2,000 came up and if we know an upset figure total on this. 
the, the upset figure is $2,000. That's what you're contributing, and I assure you I'm not coming back to you for any more money. Uh, this, is a, this is a contribution to the City of Portland to assist in the effort that they are directing and that they are responsible for. They've also scheduled a meeting at the staff level on Tuesday the 21st, <coughs> if that's a Tuesday, to discuss strategy. And, uh, you know, so even though they're directing it, they, they are reaching out to, to the other communities to, to work with them. But that is, that is the amount. And the other part of your question was most of the, the suburban towns are being asked, that is the suggested level, $2,000. The cities are being asked that have more subscribers uh, for more funds. Obviously, Portland, you know, you've heard, is at 10,000 of out-of-pocket expense. Plus, they are also the coordinating function, taking a lot of uh, Betty Boynton's time. Elizabeth Boynton, by the way, is the some of you may know the daughter of Everett Boynton, who was the Cape Elizabeth Town Treasurer for uh, many, many years. I'm just I'm asking because whenever we get into a situation where we're hiring legal counsel, it seems that you do come back. Yeah. I, you know, this is a fast-moving issue item. Okay. Uh, Senator Snow indicated that Senator Dole had indicated, uh, I think he said earlier in the week, maybe it was last Friday, that he wanted to have this legislation reported out by the full Senate Commerce and whatever committee it is today, they've changed some of the names, no later than April 7th. So this is very much fast track and uh, you know, th this will be it. I, I quite frankly you know, don't like sending monies to Washington law firms, but uh, uh, this uh, I think, uh, you know, you've had a couple thousand signatures of citizens. And, uh, I, for every indication we had from the head of the FCC and from a key senator on the key committee in the name of Senator Snow has indicated that there is an opening and an availability here to do something. Thank you. Councilor Marvin. Um, just a little follow-up question. It, the in information you sent indicates that it's 7.5% of the annual amount, $2,000, represents 7.5% of the annual amount we receive from the franchise fees paid by Time Warner. Does 7.5% mean anything, or is that just, just a number? That, no, it was just for a reference point for the council. Thanks. Councilor Nell. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, one of the advantages of this is at the same time that the uh, Washington lawyers uh, research the issue, it, 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 they can at once uh, make some suggestions as to the legislation that might be crafted. And uh, they, while they're researching those same issues, they can uh, do uh, most of the legwork in terms of um, drafting a complaint to the FCC. Uh, so they'd be uh, hitting two birds uh, with one stone. Uh, and again, uh, this is an investment. Uh, this will have uh, ramifications years down the road. Um, and uh, just one more time, the, uh, the chairman of the F FCC himself um, emphasized that uh, if he doesn't have a complaint, uh, he, there isn't, isn't really much he's going to do about it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Ready for the, the vote? Motion? There isn't a second, I don't believe. Not yet. Not yet. Second. Who made the motion? You get it? Yes, thank you. Okay. You get the box in it? 2,000. Undesignated okay. surplus. Well, you understand the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote. Seven to nothing. To consider a, a request from the coalition for equitable school funding to participate in the coalition, including providing a financial contribution and taking necessary action. Do you have any comments yeah. you would like uh, to make? This is another one of those issues. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, this is an area we have $2 million riding on, a little over $2 million. 
as the notes indicate you had on your platform uh, on the dais this evening, uh, there was a meeting February 16th in Augusta. Uh, Senator Ramuro was there. I attended it. Uh, the, all of these low, so-called low receiving communities of state aid were, were about ready to sign on to the roster committee report. And what this roster committee report does is recommends that they have income as a factor equal to property value in determining state, state school subsidy. Uh, the uh, uh, spreadsheets that the legislators and everyone else gets, uh, which happens with any issue like this, all show the effective income at 10 percent. Uh, the point was raised at the meeting, well, what happens when it goes to 50 percent, which is what the recommendation is there? And the response was, well, those numbers were once given to the Rosser Commission, and they were required to give the sheets back without keeping them, which, you know, raised a whole lot of concerns to me, but also really pushed the point to me. Unfortunately, you can see from the notes, Lewiston joined in with us, why I don't know, uh, that, you know, it's one thing to have Jane and Jean and uh, Sam DePietro, Representative Sam DePietro, raise these issues, but as, as we're looking for the, the support of those legislators as well as for the big middle ground, we want to be sure that, the, that they are really getting all these numbers and whatever. Uh, my fear is that this roster commission report might in fact be something that really does in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, in and of ourselves, uh, we tend not to have all that much support in the legislature when yeah. they look at Cape funding issues. I think uh, you know, we are helped by being part of a larger coalition that we can try to push in our direction to raise some issues. Uh, I have discussed this with the superintendent of schools, and uh, she agrees that uh, it is something that would be worthwhile for the community to, to do to enter into this debate, as the letter from Gary Wood and Doug Harris point out, uh, that uh, this is an issue that, uh, you know, again, is, is moving right along, and that, you know, unless in that the legislators in the other areas, the high receiver communities, are very, very well organized. They've already sued once, and uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we could easily see $2 million evaporate over the next five years. So uh, I think that, you know, you ought to give consideration to this. I think the, the case is a little less clear as with the previous issue as to how much of an opening there is and how much effect there is. But uh, my sense for a commitment of $34,800, which I didn't figure out the percentage, is of what we get a year. You know, we're, t we're looking here at, you know, uh, over $10 million over the next five years that, uh, you know, for an investment of 3480 which is $2 per student. So I, uh, I'd recommend that you consider it uh, out of uh, town council contingency uh, in, this, in this instance. And, uh, you know, so mainly we have a say in a coalition that uh, we can try to push to to support us. It's kind of awkward going to these meetings, to be honest with you, and pushing them in a certain direction and having a seat at the table when we haven't contributed. Uh, Especially in the table. Yeah. Yes, Council Carshaw. Um, I noticed in this listing of the other schools in, involved in this, or towns involved in this coalition, um, I don't see most of them are property rich or coastal communities, but I do not see Bar Harbor, Booth Bay, Booth Bay Harbor, York. Listed? Yeah, they are. Are they in the process of thinking about it too? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know about those particular communities, but there were quite a few more communities at this meeting. There were 13 towns and cities there at that meeting. You know, the town of Jay was there, uh, mm -hmm. Cookie Night. Yeah, they're was on there. the list. Is, is that they're listed there? On there. Are the 13 all listed? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, you've got, I don't have the attachment. With me. We've got 15 listed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, those have, uh, yeah, those have been in it. Yeah. No, the next page is some others. Yeah, and you look, and these are the existing members on the first sheet who have already given all those communities. Falmouth, Portland, South Portland, Kittery, Old Orchard, Scarborough. Uh, and then they list other communities. They don't even list uh, us uh, at all. Anybody else got a comment? I'd like to throw out. What was the amount? Yes, Councilman. 
Um, I would echo Manager McGovern's thoughts on the lack of sympathy for the Cape Elizabeth plight in funding their schools in Augusta. Yeah. And I urge you to think seriously about this. Anybody else? We hear a motion. Also now. Um. Well, I I move that we uh, uh, contribute to, to the coalition for equitable school funding. How much? And, Want to put a fee on it? And I'm once again I'm going to ask the manager to remind me. Thirty-four eighty, which is two dollars per student. Thirty-four eighty. Thirty-four hundred eighty dollars. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Anybody else got a comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, vote. Well, item 99 is a table item. Mr. Chairman. Of uh, 123.95 and 213.95. Do you wish to table it again? Mr. Which, Chairman. Yo, I, go I move that we remove it to, from the table. Second. And moved and seconded to bring item 99 from the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? What's your wishes? Mr. Chairman. Not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> this hour of night. To consider an in, into executive session to begin the annual process of evaluating the town manager and take any necessary action. I think the people would say, when you're going to do it, you've tabled it twice. Let's go. All right. What are you going to do? What's your motion? Yes, Council Cogshaw. I move that we enter into executive session to begin the annual process of evaluating the town manager and take any necessary action. I second that with a suggestion that uh, we don't have to finish it tonight. Well, you but decide that when you get in. No time at all. Okay, yeah. fine. Second. And no it takes, it's going to take me some time. <laughs> and moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Could I mention one unrelated item before you yes, go into sir. executive session? The council, as you recall, was supposed to have a, work, a workshop with the school board on uh, February 27th, and it was uh, snowy that night. And you subsequently had another meeting on other topics, a workshop, and you asked me to speak to Connie Goldman, the superintendent, about rescheduling the meeting with the school board. I did speak with her as well as briefly with Ann Chapman, the chairman of the school board, this morning, and uh, they would be agreeable. It seems that they would be agreeable to that workshop on March 27th, which is a date we had previously for a workshop. I'm not too sure I haven't already signed. Oh, Should be already in your books, but just for anyone who may be watching Something's and for all of you. Monday, time. March 27th. Monday, so March 27th. Town Council workshop, that's right. Okay. Well, Town Council's always said the good. March 27th. Next Monday. No, week, no, from, week, from, week from Monday. That's okay. A citizens' discussions of items not on the agenda. Carl, um, he's not a citizen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we voted to go into executive session. I know we did. I want, I want to finish the order. finish the agenda. Get a nice note in the mail today. <laughs> you did. Do you have something you'd like to say? No. She spells almost as well as okay. I do. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. Not to so, uh, I mean, oh, adjourn to executive session. Excuse me. All in favor? I am. In favor. Opposed? You want to meet, meet in my office?